Have you ever wished you could have your own local AI content generation toolkit? One that's fast, stable, and powerful, but without all the confusing tech setup. Today I'll walk you through how to install and set up OneGP, one of the most convenient and complete AI generation toolkits, in literally one click. Even if you've never touched PyTorch, CUDA, Triton, or even heard of Sage Detention, don't worry. You'll still be able to use OneGP to generate and edit images and videos effortlessly right on your own computer. Stick around until the end, because I'll not only show you how to install everything properly, but also how to optimize performance, fix common issues, and share some of my favorite hidden features that make this tool a must-have for local AI creators. All right, let's dive straight into the setup process. First, go to the official OneGP GitHub repository. I'll leave the link in the description below. From there, download the Windows package. Once it's finished downloading, extract the files, then simply double, click the file named Install OneGP. This single step will automatically install all required dependencies and files for you, no need to manually install Python, CUDA, or anything else. The installer handles it all. While it's running, let's quickly go through the three most important files you'll see inside the folder. The first one is the installation file. This is the file you just ran. You only need to run it once, it sets up the entire environment and all dependencies. After the initial installation, there's no need to rerun it unless you're reinstalling from scratch. The second is the update file. The update file is used to pull the latest code and models from the official OneGP repository. However, use this carefully. New features or updates may introduce experimental changes or bugs, which could temporarily affect stability. My advice is to only update when a major release or new model you need becomes available. The third file is the launch file. This is your main entry point for using OneGP. You can run it directly or use the desktop shortcut that the installer creates automatically. Once you launch the app, a web interface will open in your default browser. At the top, you'll see two drop-down menus these let you select different AI models for generating or editing images and videos. Next, open the Configuration tab. Here, you'll want to select a profile that matches your local PC hardware. Choosing a profile that's too high may cause out-of-memory errors, while going too low won't fully utilize your system's power. I highly recommend checking the official model recommendations listed in the GitHub documentation. They give detailed guidance for different GPUs and workflows. Read that before proceeding. It will save you a lot of troubleshooting later. Now that everything's set up, Let's talk about how to actually use OneGP and explore some of the best features that make this toolkit so powerful. The first standout feature is video and image masking, and it's incredibly intuitive. You can upload a video or image, then simply click on the areas you want to mask. If you need multiple masks, just hit Add Mask and select New Regions. Once you're done, click Generate, and OneGP will output green screen and alpha panel versions automatically. Here, that's where it gets even better. When you click Export, those masks are automatically sent to the AI model's input. 
For example, if you're using a VACE model, you can click export, and your newly generated masks will instantly load into the model input. No manual downloading or re-uploading, it's all seamless and automated. Next, let's talk about one of my favorite models, the WAN 2.2 text image to video model. This model is perfect for quick prototyping. It supports text to video and image to video generation, and it's relatively lightweight at around 5 billion parameters. That means you get fast results without sacrificing too much quality, perfect for testing creative ideas or generating short clips quickly. By default, most AI video models generate clips up to about 5 seconds long. But OneGP has an amazing sliding window feature that allows you to extend generation up to around 30 seconds without any complicated workflows. All you need to do is drag the number of frames to the right and set a smaller window size. Personally, I like to use 81 or 129 frames, depending on the smoothness I'm going for. This simple tweak lets you produce long, coherent clips, great for short films, creative projects, or social media content. Now let's go over a few quick fixes and performance tips to make sure WANGP runs as efficiently as possible on your machine. First, let's talk about the Triton library installation. This step is optional, but if you want to unlock faster generation speeds, it's definitely worth doing. All you have to do is download the Python 3.1 zip package. I'll include the link below. Then extract the contents into the embedded Python folder inside WANGP. Be careful not to overwrite existing files, just merge them. Once installed, you'll get a noticeable speed boost in rendering and model response times. If you notice that your tool isn't fully utilizing your GPU or memory, there are a few simple parameters you can tweak. I'll show you exactly where to add them in a moment. First, try adding the reserved memory percentage parameter when launching the tool. This tells OneGP to allocate more GPU memory up front, increasing performance if your GPU has enough headroom. Second, make sure you've selected a hardware profile that matches your actual setup. Third, enable Torch Compile and Sage Attention for additional efficiency. But remember, you'll need Triton properly installed before turning those on. Depending on your GPU model and driver version, you might also experiment with advanced parameters for even more optimization. However, I don't generally recommend enabling the T-Cache parameter in most cases. It can make your results look worse or inconsistent. Stick with the official recommended options unless you're doing in-depth testing. Now here's how to actually apply those parameters. Remember the launch file we talked about earlier? Open that file using any code or text editor such as Notepad or V's code. Look for the section labeled Launch the app. Then append your parameters right after the command that says Open Browser. Save the file, relaunch one GP and you're good to go. It's that simple, and now you'll be running at maximum performance. And that's it. You've now set up WAN GP with just one click, learned how to fine-tune it for better performance, and discovered several advanced features that can save you hours of work. If this walkthrough helped you, please give this video a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and leave a comment below if you'd like me to cover advanced WAN GP tuning or custom model integration in the next tutorial. Thanks for watching, happy creating, and I'll see you in the next video.